So it says on number nine. So if you're sharing a worksheet, one of you will have a piece of paper. So number nine, two brothers are saving money to buy tickets to a concert. This is good preparation for a ACT test. Two brothers are saving money to buy tickets to a concert. Their combined savings is $55. One brother has $15 more than the other. How much has each saved? So we're going to have to set up a statement here, and then we'll solve, okay? So once again, it says, one brother has 15 more than the other. So our first brother, do we have any idea how much money he has? So let's call it X dollars. He has X amount of dollars, right, everybody? So let's think about it. The other brother has 15 more than that, right? So the other brother has X plus 15, right? He has that amount plus 15 more. How much, so then it says, how much has been saved? So it says the two brothers are saving money to buy tickets to a concert. Their combined savings is $55. So this brother's money plus this brother's money is equal to $55. Does everybody see how we have a statement here? And now we can solve. So we have 2x plus 15 is equal to 55. We're solving for x, right? So we'll subtract 15. So we have 2x is equal to 40. Divide both sides by 2. So x is equal to 20. So let's make sure we're going to answer this question properly. So how much does each brother have? So $20 is the first brother, and then how much does the other brother have? 35. 20, I mean 35, 15 more, right? 15 more than 20, 35. Questions? Okay. We're going to skip, um, no, this one's actually, I have seen stuff like this on the ACT so much. This is such a good one. So make sure you pay attention and really try to internalize what you're seeing here. So number 11, what three consecutive numbers have a sum of 126? So first, First of all, consecutive means one comes right after the, the next. So like, for example, two, three, four. Does that make sense? Consecutive numbers, one right after another. So we have no idea what the consecutive numbers are. So the first number is x, right? Everybody, the first number, we have no idea what it is. It's x, right? So then a number that comes consecutively after x would be one greater than that. Two, three, four, right? So wouldn't that be x plus one? Wouldn't that one be x plus one? And then this one would be 2 greater than that, right? So x plus 2. So it says the sum of those three consecutive numbers add up to be 126. So we say x plus x plus 1 plus x plus 2 is equal to 126. So then we've combined like terms here. So x, x, x. So that's 3x. 1 plus 2 is 3, which is equal to 126. So we subtract 3. 3x is equal to 123, divide both sides by 3, so x is equal to 41. So that's x, so let's, it says what three consecutive numbers? So this one's 41, then what's the next one? 42, right? 43, three consecutive numbers, right? And you just minus it by 3, then divide it by 3, and then that equals... 41. It says, that's not the question. What three consecutive numbers have a sum? So we found the first one. Yeah. 41, not plus. Well, yeah, yeah. So then we check it. So now we can check it. And right, those are the numbers. Don't those sum up if you add them up to be 126. So you had no idea where to start. So that's why you had, why you had to solve for x. But 126 minus 3 because there's 3 that you have to figure out. Divided by 3. That's, we algebraically solved the first one's 41. So obviously the next one's 42 and the next one's 43. That's what three consecutive numbers means, right? So then we can check our work. 41 plus 42 plus 43, does that equal 126? Yes. Those are the three consecutive numbers that add to 126. Does everybody see that? So to be able to figure out where we started, what consecutive number we started with, we had to set up a true statement. Okay, next one. Actually, okay, yeah. Do the front of the worksheet. Actually, wait. I want to do this one with you real quick. Nope, just a second. I put it in the wrong spot. Don't move. Where did I put it? Right here. Okay, so I don't know why I put it clear back there. Okay, number 15, and then the rest of the time for a minute will be yours. Okay? So it says, on number 15, now this is going to be some major algebra, guys. So pay attention. We're given this equation here, and we're asked to solve for W. Okay, let's look here. So we have A is equal to LW plus WH plus LH. Are any of those like terms? No. So we can't combine any of those. Does everybody understand? Well, we're trying to solve for W. Don't we have two Ws? 
Okay, yep. so we're going to have to get those W's alone on the same side of the equation and anything else on the other side. Okay, so this has a W, this has a W. So those are going to stay on the same side of the equation. So let's get the W stuff alone. So let's subtract LH from both sides. Continuing, so we subtract LH from both sides. So we have A minus LH is equal to LW plus WH. Now, does everybody understand that up to there? This is a kind of hard one. That's why we're going through it. Okay. So now here's the thing. We're trying to solve for W. So we're trying to get W alone. But we've got to kind of manipulate this first. So first of all, isn't there a W in this term and in this term? So let's rewrite this side in the factored form. So since there's a W in both terms, we can factor out a W, right? That's in common? So then we factor out a W, and left would be L... We'll divide both sides by W to see what's left. L plus H. Is everybody comfortable with that? So we have W times L plus H is equal to A minus LH. Now to get W alone, last one last step, what would we do? What are we going to do? I know you can know. Good. Isn't this W being multiplied to L plus H? Yeah. So what does multiplication division? We'll divide both sides by L plus H. And then we have W alone. Haven't we solved for W? Yes. Okay, sweet. There we go. Questions on that? So be really careful in your algebra, guys. Be really careful. I know you guys are going to think advancedly, so I need you to really do that. So be careful when you're going about these. Okay, so now you're going to do the front page. Ready, set, go. You can solve an equation, you can solve an inequality. They're exactly the same. You go about it exactly the same. An inequality is just an equation with a fancy equal sign. So everybody look. 2x plus 3 is equal to 5. Doesn't that look the exact same as 2x plus 3 is greater than 5? So we solve them the same way. So we would subtract 3 from both sides, right? So we have 2x is equal to 2. We have 2x is greater than 2. Solving for x, divide both sides by 2, we get x is equal to 1, right? Divide both sides by 2, we get x is greater than 1. So and if you can solve an equation, you can solve an inequality. Now there is one rule you have to remember, big red flag. And that's if you won't, when solving, if you multiply or divide by a negative, then you must switch the sign of the inequality. Everywhere. Yep, so if it's this way, and then you divide by a negative when solving, you'll flip it this way. If you multiply by a negative and you're solving, you flip it, you know what I mean? So you just flip the inequality. Um, but that's only, only if you're dividing or multiplying by a negative. So if you add a negative, that's fine. Did you all hear that? Yeah, negative. If you subtract a negative, that's fine. Does everybody understand the difference between multiplying, dividing, the rule, and adding and subtracting? You won't change the sign. We're all good? So for example, in negative 2x plus 3 is greater than 5. I subtract 3, so I have negative 2x is greater than 2. To solve for x, I had to divide both sides by negative 2. Oops, I divided by negative, so I flipped my inequality. So x is less than 1, okay? Sweet. Here we go, number 5. Solve by um, solve and graph the inequality. So these are linear, so we're graphing, we're solving and graphing a linear inequality. Okay, so let's go about this algebraically. Now I'm going to do it one way. You might do it a different, but let's go through it. So when we get x alone, subtract 2, right? Oh, I subtract the negative. Do I need to change the sign? No. So we have 3 times x plus 1 is less than 9. Now, I'm not going to distribute 3 through. You can, you'll get the same answer. Can I divide both sides by 3? Yep. So I'm going to divide both sides by 3. So those become 1. So we have x plus 1 is less than 3, right? So we have x plus 1 is less than 3. Last step, subtract 1. So x is less than 2, right? So then you'll draw your own number line. Boom, this is 0, here's 1, here's 2. We're keeping, we're graphing this. For x values less than 2, less than not equal to, so it's an open circle. So less than, x values less than 2, won't that be this way? Well, that goes the x values less than 2. Yeah. So we're done. We wouldn't fill it in because it's not or equals 2. Okay, next one. Number 8, solve. There's many different ways to solve. Now you could just show you one, through, one third through, but then you're going to be adding fractions and stuff. I'm just going to say, I know I can undo one third by multiplying both sides by 3. Does everybody understand that? 
3 times 1 third is 1, right? So I can multiply both sides by 3, though. This entire side, most people mess up right there. So we didn't multiply both sides by 3, so that became a 1. So we have 7a minus 1 is less than or equal to, we have 3 times all that stuff. So we'll have to distribute. So we have 6a plus 21. 21. Solving for a. So we got to combine our a's. So I'm going to subtract 6a. So I have negative 1 is less than or equal to, so I have, sorry, a minus 1, right? Is less than or equal to 21. I just thought you had a question. Then we add 1 to both sides. So we have a is less than or equal to 21. Is everybody comfortable with that? 22. Yep, 22. Thank you for fixing that. So now we've drawn our number line. I'm just going to go 0, this is 22. And it's x values less than or equal to 22. So less than or equal to, equal to, close circle, these are the x values less than or equal to 22. Do you get how to graph it? Yep. Okay. So number one, these are the hardest, but if you take my suggestion, they're actually pretty easy. So take my suggestion on these ones. So it says, write, write an inequality that represents this sentence. So number one. Four less than a number is greater than negative 28. People get jumbled up. So let me tell you something. Work from the middle out, okay? I promise this will really help. So it says four less than a number. I'm going to start in the middle. A number. We don't know what that number is, so let's call it X, right? You work from the middle out. Now it says four less than that number. Minus four. So X minus four. Now it says is greater than negative 28. So greater than negative 28. It didn't say or equal to, right? It could have said it could have been worded like this though. At least negative twenty-eight. So we would have done greater than or equal to with at least negative twenty-eight. Because doesn't that mean so everything greater than or equal to? Okay. One more. Number four. Write an inequality that represents this sentence. The quotient of a number and eight is at most negative six. Start from the middle off. So you have a number, call it x. It says the quotient of that number and h, so the quotient means division, that number and h. Are we following? As at most negative 6. At most. So wouldn't it be less than or equal to negative 6? Because at most, it's negative 6. So it's got to be less than that, right? Does that make sense? And at most, it's, it's so that the at most makes it equal to. Okay, sweet. You guys are doing good. Okay, so now you're going to do 1 through 10 on the second page. Ready to go.